In this little segment, we're going to be talking about what I think is five essential bits of kit for photography and videography. Now, they're essentials, but they don't have to cost the earth. So that's something to bear in mind when we are going through this. They're products that I pretty much use every time that I'm out filming. So that's why to me they're essentials and I, I couldn't see myself going out and filming or taking photos without using them at some point. So one of the first things worth mentioning is it's always worth having a decent tripod and that's, that carries through whether it's phone photography, whether you've got DSLR, mirrorless camera, even a little compact, a decent tripod is an absolute must, especially when it comes to self-takes. There's no good having just a, a really cheapy tripod that is going to blow over in the wind, it's not stable, that you can't adjust legs because then it's, you might as well just be leaning your camera on a bucket or something like that. So a good tripod is well recommended and you don't have to pay the earth for them. You can, for a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you can probably pick one up for about 50 quid and that would be a really good sturdy tripod. It doesn't have to be hundreds or like pushing close to a thousand pound when you're looking at carbon tripods. So something about 50 quid is going to make the world a difference. And not only with self takes, but if you're doing landscapes or if you're doing long exposure photography, if you get any sort of wobble on the camera where it's a bit windy then the image is just going to come out blurred so it's no good. The second little product worth mentioning is one of these. Now probably looks a bit dodgy but it's called a rocket blower. Now these are really handy for when it comes to cleaning lenses or your sensor. Quite often you find that if your sensor gets a bit dirty you get little specks all over your photos. You can get rid of them in, in Photoshop but if you don't have to then obviously this will make your life a lot easier. Simply a case of just pushing it together and it just creates air. It literally is a rubber blower. Um, and then this will help to dislodge anything that might be on the sensor or on your, your lens. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't obviously affect anything. It's not like getting a cloth to it if you've got a bit of grit on it and then it end up scratching the lens or scratching the sensor. This way it just blows it off without actually causing any damage. You can pick these up for about a fiver as well. So something that's always worth having in your bag. The next thing to mention is some form of lighting. So where I do a lot of video and photography, I use a video light. Um, the benefit of this is you can get them super cheap, so it's not like paying hundreds for a flash. I think this one cost about 20 quid and came with a couple of spare batteries and it's super bright as well. On the back of it, you can actually change the brightness too. So you can dim it right down if you need to. And it also comes with a couple of little filters that go over it just to help diffuse the light so it's not too overpowering or too white. Um, so really handy, like I say, it costs about 20 quid or something. Um, and most of these will come with a little hot shoe attachment. So if you are using a proper camera, then it will just attach to the top of the camera and then you can angle it as well. You've got a little adjustment here. Now, the benefit of using a video light over a flash is it makes it nice and easy to expose. So I use this in my self-take photography. Um, and by having a constant light rather than a flash, you don't have to keep flashing away trying to get the right exposure. You can literally set this up and then you can expose accordingly. So really handy, like I say, it doesn't cost the earth and it will make your self takes a lot better. Another thing worth mentioning is if you are getting into videography, then you want decent mics. Audio is just as big a part of things as actual visual clarity and the, the quality of the lenses and the camera. If you've got really good quality lenses, really good quality camera, and the audio lets it down, a lot of people will stop watching. So there's a variety of things that you can get. I use these uh, Sennheiser mics, and basically one of these will attach to the camera, and then one of them actually attaches in person. So you might see somewhere, I've got the little mic, and then it's just slipped into my pocket, and then on that camera, there's actually this bit just attached to the top. So this is what both me and Curly use for our audio and it helps to produce really crystal clear audio. Again, you don't have to be paying big money for these. Uh, you can get cheaper brands than Sennheiser, but obviously where we're doing it on a, a professional level, it's got to be decent quality. Um, not to say that the cheaper versions won't be good. They'll be so much better than if you're just using the, the internal mic in the camera. Again, you don't have to use wireless mics like that. You can get a shotgun mic that will just sit on the top of the camera. And again, that's still going to be so much better quality audio than just the internal, cam uh, the internal mic in the camera. So well worth bearing that in mind. And I'm sure there's probably phone alternatives as well where you can just plug it into the phone and again, just give you much better audio. And then the final thing worth mentioning is storage. So a lot of modern cameras these days have got 25 megapixel sensors upwards 
and if you're shooting raw photos that takes up a lot of memory so you want storage in the camera so you want decent sized memory cards and you want storage at home as well so when it comes to editing it's well worth having that extra storage because you don't want to be on the bank see a, an awesome shot that you want to take and realize that you run out of storage I mean, my cameras that I'm using, they're the Sony a7 III. I think that's a 24 megapixel sensor. And the raw images from that is 50 megabyte per image. So if you're using a burst mode and you take 10 images, that's 500 megabytes straight away. So you want a lot of storage. Curly uses the a7R III, which is a higher resolution camera. So I think they're 46 megapixels and his raw images are about 100 meg per image. So when you actually think of it that way, the bigger the bigger the storage obviously the more images you can store um, you don't want to be left without or having to go through and delete certain images because you're trying to make room for a fish that you've caught right at the end of the session when you filled your camera so storage is key and like i say when you get home as well and you're importing all them photos it's amazing how much space they actually take up i find i can easily do 10 gigabytes of photos in uh, in a 24-hour session and that's, there's not that many photos when you actually think about it. Um, one other point actually worth mentioning um, is editing software. So when it comes to photography or video, whether it's mobile photography or you're using a DSLR or mirrorless, editing software is a big part of the process. I showed you in the previous vlog how much of a difference it can make. And it's the same with, with phone photography as well. You can really change how that image looks when it comes to editing. So again, you can get apps on your phone if you are into phone photography, or you can get things like Lightroom and Photoshop if, you're, if, you, if you are using a DSLR or mirrorless camera and you're shooting raw images. And that said, a lot of phones actually shoot raw images as well. So you can take all the images on your phone, upload them when you get home, and then use a, a proper bit of software to actually edit them and get the best out of them. The same goes for video as well. So it's all well and good taking loads of really nice clips, but if you've got nothing to piece it together, then they don't really mean a lot. So I use Premiere Pro, but again, you can probably get cheaper apps, you can get phone apps, so you can create little edits on your phone. So well worth looking into it and actually completing a piece rather than just doing half of it. So that is, I don't know how many we're up to now, five or six photography tips or essentials. Um, hopefully it's beneficial to you guys and there'll be more tips and tricks in future videos.